day tomorrow together. The 2008 Absa off-road season started with a customary pipe opener, the Nissan Dealer 400 in the quaint little town Darling in the Western Cape in February, and certainly spelt out a season that was going to be a humdinger. The production vehicle category, bigger and better than last season, looks set for an explosive start, with a premier SP class featuring more than 15 vehicles from four manufacturers lining up. Reigning champions Nissan were again preparing to slog it out with the Works, Fords and Toyotas. But the big three were also joined by a lone entry from Land Rover. Seven-time champions Nissan was spearheaded by reigning drivers champions Duncan Foss and Rock Pitchford in a factory Sassel Nissan Navara. In the second, four-time champion Hannes Grobler even had a new man in the jump seat, Juan Moore. The old firm was back to the factory Ford challenge, was spearheaded by former champions Neil Woolridge and Kenny Schalthammer, joined by Mark Ferguson and Craig West. They would in turn be supported by Kubis van Tonde and Rian Gropper in the Unifreight Ford Ranger. While motorsport legend Alfie Cox was back in a bucky, kitted out in the impressive silver and black livery of the motorite SB crew and trusty nav Henny Tostierka at his side. Toyota lined up six SB-class cars with two new Castrol Toyota Hilux V6 works cars in the capable hands of Mark Renier and Chris Birkin and Bevan Berthold with Robin Houghton in the second. Chris Visser partnered Yabi Badenost and Hiko and Yap de Brain were together again in the Mikarin XL dealer team Hilux. Yaku Swanepoel and Keith Solomon and Roacons as George and Sharon Barkhausen made a quantum leap from Class E to the very competitive SP class. Swanepoel and Solomon will campaign under the IDM cement banner. Staying with the production car class, the categories D for six-cylinder cars and E also had a decidedly edgy and competitive look to it. The future foretold of a Class D battle which was to be another shootout between Toyota and Nissan. Reigning drivers champ Cliff Beichelt with a new co-driver Jimmy Gock were out in the N1 4x4 Toyota Hilux. Nissan sentiments were with Kutsia Labas Kachny and Johan Kharaba in the Ray Sonics Nissan Hardbody and the trustworthy Ryobi Nissan driven by brothers Henry and Maurice Zamatin. The other Toyota challenge was to be supplied by Dama Spain Ramon beside note and Stefan Lock, who were without doubt the rookies of the year in 07. Class E2 was due to supply some surprises and plenty of thrills a minute. In the first race of the season, it was all systems go in Darling. Nissan won no less than seven out of eight production car races in 2007, and the other manufacturers were all ready to topple them from their lofty perch. With that performance, it was inevitable that they would clinch the manufacturer's trophy, another accolade that Toyota and Ford would want to wrest from their grip in 08. Foss was off and into his stride very quickly, clearly with intent, as he set off to defend his hard-won national championship crown, but for the first 100 Ks, he chased Krobler. At the end of the first two tough and dusty 166-kilometer loops that made up the route, it was a Nissan 1-2. Foss led Krobler by a scant 33 seconds, while Cronier was third, three minutes and 14 seconds back. But he and co-driver Birkin had developed side shaft problems and were forced to replace it at the designated service point. Ivar Tollefson and Quinn Evans were hustling the third Nissan along at a rate of knots. While Woolridge and Schalthammer also had plans of their own, cut in on the action at the front between Nissan and Toyota. The Ford duo started off like the clappers and were just a few seconds off the pace early on. They weren't exactly holding back. Ditto for Fissa and Bardnost in the second theater in the top six, but the dust and the heat continued to make it tougher as the day wore on. Cox, back in the comfort of an enclosed cockpit after doing duty in a special vehicle the year before, was reveling in it, but the motorite SB was just a little slow. And then things went horribly wrong. Defending special vehicle champion Evan Hutchison and Akim Bergman rolled their bat at speed and were hit by Naim Mosaji and Rayon Bodhanya, which instantly set the motorite special alight. Woolridge and Schalthammer were on the scene first. Luckily, Hutchinson reacted quickly when Bergman lost consciousness and pulled him to safety. That's one million rands worth of car burnt to cinders and our race camera too, mind you. At the front, though, blissfully unaware of all that going on behind him, Foss was on the way to making the perfect defense of his title. Clocking the fastest first loop gave him a healthy lead over his stablemate Krobler, who had not given up the chase yet. While Cronier and Birkin themselves were throwing caution to the wind and let her rip in taxing conditions.
left the DSP late after that repair, but there was to be more heartbreak as they finished fifth, but were later excluded for deviating from the race route. The Zaydenote and Lock were trying to pick up where they left off in 07. With Class D leaders Kutsia Labaskachny and Johan Gerber piloting the race Sonics Nissen to a very healthy ninth place. Class E, Yanni Fusser and Jox Leroux and their team Barbersbank Toyota impressed with their early season form and led Class E by four minutes. The Barbersbank lads were just ahead of Thomas Rundle and Brian Roberts in the Bowden Tire Services Nissan Hardbody. They were pushing hard to keep it that way. The 2.7 litre engine battle was tight. Harold and Tian Kun brought up the rear of the SB class as they quietly worked their way into seventh. The last surviving car in class with the Land Rover doing its name proud. And in the Ryobi Nissan, the brothers and Matten were on their own mission to steal the red class D car to a first finish for the year. Unfortunately, they fell short of that target this time. For the second car in class D, the defending champion, the N1 4x4 with Cliff Weichelt at the steering, did get there in one piece, finishing at 6 hours and 35 minutes, only to be excluded for an infringement. As for Foss, he was in sublime form and kept his foot flat on the accelerator. But it was just enough to keep ahead. Because Krobler smoked the third fast the second loop of the day and was only 36 seconds behind. It was a real dogfight. Krobler held back nothing. The Sassol Nissans in a new livery with a blue trim were out in first and second. And Hans Krobler's SB Nissan Navara 4 litre growled along pretty rapidly, but couldn't gain on his teammates. With Pusser and Bardnost in a spirited performance in fourth. But no one could keep up with Woolridge and Schulthammer, who absolutely flat out clocked the fastest second lap by almost two minutes and were closing rapidly on the rest. The Micker and Excel dealer team of Hecho and Jaap de Bremen were still going strongly, but they ran into trouble just after this and were excluded as well. The second works Toyota with Bevan Berthold at the helm and Robin Houghton calling were also forced to call it a day on the second loop due to mechanical troubles. But the Toyota flag was being flown by Fusser and Bodnos who had maintained a steady pace throughout. And Ford were held bent on keeping the top ten blue and white. Kubis von Tonda and Rian Guelpe and their Unifreight Ford Ranger were doing just that in sixth place. With Weichelt and Gott joining that list of exclusions after getting it to the line. But the reliable team of the opening race, Lovis Kachny and Kharaba, soldiered on and were eventually the only Class D to reach the line and notch up an official finish. And in Class E, Fissa and Bardnost had just a one-second time difference for their two loops, showing their consistency in winning their category. But Arnie, make no mistake, it was close. Just three minutes and 49 seconds later, Rundle and Roberts steamed by, second in Class E. But the performance of the Darling event came from the Femi jump Duncan Foss. Admittedly, it was a 36-second win, but he controlled things superbly and earned 25 valuable points for the victory. Woolridge and Schulthammer's valiant effort to stop and help at the accident scene probably cost them, but their second lap showed that the Ford would be competitive in 2008. The Eastern Cape 500 round two of the 2008 ABSA Off-Road Championship was a tough challenge. This route was totally different to any other the 60 drivers in the production car class and specials had faced before. A substantial part of the event, reduced from 1,000 kilometers to 500 because of fuel price hikes, was due to run in the Longmore Forest area in and around Port Elizabeth, making it treacherously fast at times. Grandier and Birkin were looking for their first big off-road win after last season's bad luck, where they were within sight of the finish line twice and wrecked it both times. They thought PE was a good opportunity, with force setting after them. Grandier and Birkin dominated the prologue and then set the pace from the off to take a firm hand of control on the Eastern Cape 500. And try as they might, Force and stand-in co-driver young Louis Weichel could make no early impression. 1,4. Mountaineer Tollefson and Evans were also right on top of things early on and were just two seconds off the pace. The Micker and XL dealer team's De Brains had started off in a big hurry and were up into fourth place. They shocked everyone with a continued good form. 
With the overcast conditions necessitating lights, Woolridge and Schulthammer were nicely ensconced in the top ten again and looking to apply some pressure. In the Castrol Toyota, Fissan Bardenos were up into sixth in the SP class and ready to perform some more overtaking maneuvers. With Krobla and Moore working their magic after experiencing an electrical problem at the start, which cost them 10 very long minutes. Now Cox in the motorite SP was next and desperately needed a finish after bombing out in the Western Cape. One driver relished this quick driving opportunity was Ford's Mark Ferguson and his good friend Craig West. They saddled up the big Ford Ranger bearing number SP21 in the production car class. The Barkaisons with their Ruacon Toyota Hilux had started having clutch pipe trouble, but were still holding their own in their SP, belching flames. With the SP Ford Ranger 4-liter Fontonda and Guampa still 11th, having gone neither up nor down after the first 100-odd caves. In the middle of the forest, Bertolt and Houghton had managed to flip their brand new Hilux. The Toyota lads were not too pleased with this latest misfortune. <laughs> With the men from Alberton, the Zermattens in their red Nissan Roby in the lead in Class D. Just ahead of these fellows, Cliff Weichelt and Jimmy Gock in their Toyota, but they were second by just 25 seconds. It was great racing in Class D. With Rundle and Roberts taking the Bowden Tires SP through its paces rather quickly, but they too rolled it at the worst possible time. Chris Deploy and Eng van Vieren were putting together a fine showing in Class D, running well in fourth place. While Class E protagonists Van Breda and Duplessis were working it steadily here towards the end of the first loop. While passing some of the stricken traffic on the roadside who were repairing a flat. And the interesting livery of the Poch Plastics Recycling E-Class was easy to spot, even though the skies were clouded over. But they were all chasing the spare Cronier and Birken, and it was chasing in vain. The Rodeport man was in the lead to stay there. Woolridge and Schultheimer in the Ford, then put together an amazing mid-race surge and were up into the top three. With Tollefsen and Evans after a slow start finding their rhythm and feel for the Longmore Forest Roads. Fusser and Bardenor sporting SP number nine had overcome a leaking crank seal. And then to top that, Yarpi was battling car sickness. Despite that, they were heading for 10th place. still seething after his electrical problems was doing some low-level flying. Yeah, and so was Cox, but he was out of the top five and battling to keep up. And to make those pesky little tight corners. But with their fly-by wire throttle controls, the Nissans weren't battling with that. Forces windscreen wipers had ceased to function and they were battling to see instead. With Guapa and Fantonda trying to squeeze every ounce out of the Unifreight Ford Ranger. The IDM cement entry was mixing it with the big boys. Yucca Swanepoel and Keith Solomon 11th in the SPs. But a moment for Mark Rony and Chris Birkin to savour. At the line at Kings Beach, their first win in the Apps Off-Road Series. A 10 minute and 48 second victory after a well-judged and well-controlled 500 Ks in and around Port Elizabeth. It was a big day for Toyota. And although they were second across the line after a race-long ding-dong battle, it was Ivan Tollefsen and Quinn Evans in the Nissan Navarro took third in the production car battle behind the second-placed Ford Racing Ranger pair of Woolridge and Schulthammer, who finished second fastest in the last loop. A fine victory and a full 25 championship points for the Toyota pairing, while Hrubler and Moore recovered well after their 10-minute wait at the start. But national champ Foss could only finish seventh. Foss and Pitchford and Woolridge and Schulthammer heading the top of the list, but you counted Krobler out only at your own peril. The top 20 was rounded out by Rundle and Roberts with 8 points in 11th and Van Breda and Duplessis with 2 points in 20th place. Our Absa Off-Road Championship review of the first half of the season continues.
and from Absa, going off the beaten track.